The cadets have given us a great deal of excitement in the first four rounds. Let's see if they can do it all again, starting with the grid positions. The cadets aged 8 to 12. Here are the grid positions. Jay Goodwin on pole, first appearance in the championship. Ryan Morgan starts on P2. Henry Hunter on three, first of the two brothers this month. Mark Wakefield on four. Travis Kirk comes next, then Ben Duncalf. Behind Ben is uh, Connor Savage starting P7. William Hunter, the second of the two brothers, on eight. Liam Murphy starts nine. Scott Rickson on ten. Piers Packen and Walsh for Hobart on 11. Joe Byrne led the race for so long before getting punted off last month. He starts 12. Ord had a good run last month, as did Horton, starting 13-14. David McNichols on 15. George, uh, Jacob Huntstone carries the onboard camera. Luke Hughes starts 17. Then the top three, Conor Llewellyn, Danny Sweeney, and the championship leader, Ryan Burns, rounds out the grid. 20 carts make up the field for this first race of the day. The cadets for ages 8 to 12, sponsored by kkckartshop.com. The onboard camera, which we have a bit of a sound problem with, being carried by Jacob Huntstone. Cart 5, fifth in the championship. The championship leader, of course, Ryan Burns, as we've already seen. Ryan carrying the number one plate and the Motus TV bodywork graphics, those graphics uh, beautiful in a Buffy the Vampire Slayer kind of way. Sort of Sarah Michelle Geller sort of quality those graphics have to them. And it's that sort of comment which probably explains why I'm sad, lonely and divorced. They're off and running with a green flag and uh, Burns no way through into turn one. Come through turn one, we're back on board with Huntstone looking around the outside, that should give him the inside here. Coming down into the left-hander turn two, it does. You see Luke Hughes has made up three or four places. He's looking for an outside move through the hairpin and seems to make that work. Number two there is Danny Sweeney. Nine Bradley orders drop to the back of the field at the front of the field. It's Mark Wakefield. Wakefield was out front early doors last month. He's got the lead again. Morgan through the left-hander second. There comes Duncalf, William Hunter, Rickson, Goodwin, Horton, Henry Hunter, Byrne and then Kirk were on board with uh, Huntston, he's following McNichol, number seven, Hughes is in 14th place currently. The championship lead has only made up three places on the first lap, he's got some work to do, as has second and third in the championship. Second is Danny Sweeney, number two, number three, Connor Llewellyn, as Rickson gives Hunter a push down the outside, past Duncalf and Morgan. They go through to second and third, back on board with Huntstone, who is following Connor Savage now down through turn two, Savage in ninth, Huntston still there in tenth place. Number eight, Jordan Horton looking for a move on Doncar through the hairpin, but no joy still there in sixth place as he looks up the inside of Morgan, goes through to fifth, I think it is, as they come through the right-hander at the end of Paddock, still on board there with Hunston, still following Savage. Horton has made that move to Horton up to fifth. That's Joe Byrne, 13, for so long the leader last month before he was dumped off on the last lap, put into the tyres. The championship leader is starting to make his moves now. That's uh, Ryan Burns. Meanwhile, Llewellyn's made his way past Sweeney. So uh, first, second and third there in the championship. Still firmly entrenched at the back of the field. That's number five carrying the onboard camera, Jacob Huntstone. He won the gold cup held here at Three Sisters last month. He's aged 11 and comes from New Mills in Derbyshire. And I'm told Sam's got Jacob's girlfriend. Alan, I've caught up with the girlfriend of Jacob Hunstone, Pia Warburton. Jacob, number five, who started 16th today. How's Jacob getting on? Um, he's doing really well. He's uh, position number eight at the moment, and um, he's catching up really fast. And he's taking over, like, loads of people. Do you follow him to all his races? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Jacob Hunstone, international man of mystery. Back on board with Jacob, who's uh, chasing down uh, cart 24, that's Ben Duncalf, runs into the back of Ben, just unsettles his cart slightly. Jacob should have a word with Ben Constanduras, our trackside reporter about um, women and how to treat them. Uh, normally when you get a new girlfriend, you take her out somewhere nice, maybe to the restaurant, something like that. Ben decided it would be a great idea to bring his brand new girlfriend to the meeting at round three. She looked extremely bored the entire day and then dumped him by text <laughs> she didn't even send him a fax or email just sent him a text sorry Ben it's off it was even funnier when he said I can't understand why <laughs> anyway let's get back to uh, matters at hand racing William Hunter's through to the lead Wakefield's dropped to second Rickson's up to third Horton fourth Luke Hughes cart four there's up to seventh he started 16th Sam 
Alan, I'm next to Julie Packenham Walsh, Piers' mother. He's starting 11th and he's number 16. He was fantastic in testing yesterday, but what's going on today? Uh, he just seems to be um, having a bit of a problem once he gets into the actual race. Um, practice is fine, he's really, really on the pace, up there with the really fast boys. But when we change to the racing fuel, you know, put the other oil in, it just seems to be too hot for him and he's very big. Uh, for a nine-year-old, uh, really could do with moving up, but he's obviously not there yet. We're going to have to just sort of sit with it for a couple of years. Might just do practice minimax next year, um, just see how he goes on with that. Wakefield had battled back through to the lead, but then hung himself completely out to dry around the hairpin, lost seven places. It's Scott Rickson out front as we rejoin it through Luna with Horton through to second. Finished fifth in the GYG Club Championship in 2005. Did Scott Rickson? He's just adjusting the mixture on that car breath to give us a push signal. Looks outside, sees Horton, but doesn't see the inside move of Hughes and Byrne. Hughes sweeping into the lead. Byrne through to second. Horton there in third place. Now Connor Llewellyn puts in the fastest lap of the race at a 41 48 163. 1 1.04 seconds now between Hughes in first and Horton in third place. Luke Hughes. Luke's managed by the 2004 British Rally Champion Dave Higgins, so some quality support there for the young man from Colwyn Bay. 22 there, William Hunter led it early on, he's dropping back through the field at the moment. Hughes and Byrne come through Luna, and it looks like Horton's got a problem. Gap between Hughes and Horton in just a third of a lap has extended to 2.08 seconds, so Horton's got some sort of problem there. Back on board with Huntstone, that's 23 Savage. I actually tipped Savage to take the win today. He may oblige me with a podium, but I think Hughes and Byrne out front have got a bit too much for the rest today. Up the inside of Horton goes Savage. Huntstone looks to go with him, contact with Horton! And in the same place that Huntstone got taken out just a couple of meetings ago, the same sort of incident, but this time it was Huntstone up the inside. Here's a look at the Pie Research replay. You can see Savage has already gone through. Well, Horton looks like he's looking across there. Can perhaps just about make out the front nose cone of Huntstone, but keeps turning in on an ever tighter radius. Contact is made. It'll probably be deemed nothing more than a racing incident, but for those two, it's a bit of a disaster. Both of them have gone. Another driver with a problem is Scott Rickson, out of the shot, he's fallen way back, he's about to be lapped now, he's had a problem with that engine, clearly he's got it running again, but uh, he's about to be lapped very shortly, in fact right now into the hairpin, Hughes to Llewellyn now, first to third, 3.81 seconds, but it's Joe Byrne right on the back of Luke Hughes, you may remember last month, there were nine carts in a train with Joe Byrne at the front of that train going into the last lap over the valley. We're on the club circuit this month and it was that man that was put into the tyres unceremoniously. Very, very unfortunate for him. He ended up down in 10th place. I did say last month, watch for him this month. I thought he would be challenging for the win this time once again and he's proving me absolutely right. But this time, instead of being out front going into the last lap, he's there in second place. Now... One lap remaining, he's got to be creative, he's got to be inventive, he's got to work an angle, force Hughes into some sort of an error in the final lap, turn that uh, second place into track position for the final corner. What do you think, Ben? As the last lap board is shown to our leaders, the question for me remains, has Joe Byrne got enough to get past Luke Hughes in the last remaining corners? He's still sitting on his bumper, he's been there for a couple of laps now. And as we're coming into Luna for the last time, will he, there's a lot of protection going on. Will he make it? I don't think he will. I think Hughes has got far too much experience this time. He lost at round one after leading going into that final turn, but he's not going to give up that inside line. We've seen that before. He hasn't made that mistake, and Hughes takes the win. Absolutely delighted he is too, and so well he should be. Burn will be, I guess, disappointed with second, but uh, it's better than being punted off and finishing 10th. And certainly Savage looks very happy with his podium position there in third place. Luke Hughes takes the win from Joe Byrne, Connor Savage in third. Connor Llewellyn's fastest lap, 48.163, the fastest lap of the race. They're followed in by David McNichol in fifth, Liam Murphy sixth. Great drive by Liam, that one. Uh, Danny Sweeney second in the championship, can only finish seventh. The Ryan Burns, a championship leader down there in ninth place. William Hunter led it early on, finished in eighth. And brother Henry rounding out the top ten. 
A couple of new faces on the podium today in this month's cadets race. Connor Savage, you finished third, and Joe Burney finished second. Joe, obviously, you led for most of the race last month, so it's lovely to see all you on the podium today. Luke, you finished second at round one, but you were leading for most of the race until Luna, where you went wide. Obviously, major mistake there. Did you have that in mind today? Yeah, I was fully focused going on to Luna. Um, I knew that Joe was right behind me. I um, took a tight line, and that helped me to win. And I'd like to thank my dad and my sponsors, Global Tiles, for helping me get this far. Well, that result has spiced things up nicely in the Cadet Championship. Burns still holds on to the Championship lead, but only by three over Sweeney. Llewellyn's one further back, and Hughes within seven of the leader. After the break, we'll be bringing you some information about a scheme designed to get you started in karting, particularly if you live in the Cumbria area. We'll see you soon. Starting on pole is Luke Russell. Second will be Jordan Holmes, finished third in Kart Masters last year in the WTP Cadet Class. Ryan Singleton makes his second appearance in the Championship. Liam Morley, just back from injury, broke his wrist three months ago. Ross Anderson starts five, Tom Durbridge from six, Ryan Longley for focal point on seven, Matt Isherwood drives the plum base cart from eight. Then comes Matt Gibson on nine, Joe Charlton starts P10. The top five in the Championship are Josephine Ferrada, Sinead Gress, Roy Anderson carrying the onboard camera, he's cart number three. Cart number two is Joe Bullen, the championship leader, the internationally famous. James Theodore, rough and running, Minimax for 80s, 11 to 16. That is if you can make the weight at 16. And uh, we're through turn one, on board with Roy Anderson. That is the championship leader, James Theodore. Down to turn three, the hairpin, Singleton up the inside of Russell, bit of contact. Uh, Theodore and uh, Anderson, Roy Anderson that is, not Ross Anderson, Ross Anderson 16. The Singleton goes up the inside of Russell again, more contact and he's still not through to the lead. 25 carts is uh, Jordan Holmes, finished third as I said earlier in Kart Masters last year in the WTP Cadet Class. As we see Singleton finally through to the lead and Ross Anderson follows him through. Gibson loses his back end there, we're back on board here with Roy Anderson and Anderson has lost a good 20 metres there, he's had to hit the brakes to stop himself running into the back of... Josephine Ferrada and that has slowed him down and the progress of the championship leader as well. Joe Bullen on cart two has made a cracking start. He's got a uh, good three carts between himself and Anderson but more importantly he's got about 35 metres as we see James Theodore championship leader up the inside of Anderson. Back on board with Anderson now who slips in behind Theodore. The uh, Don't forget if you are new to this championship the numbers on the carts denote the championship positions of each of the drivers in each of the classes. So carts five and six there, Josephine Ferrada and Joe Charlton. They are fifth and sixth respectively in the championship. Ferrada just getting the best of that battle there. That's cart 16, it's Ross Anderson. Singleton has already checked out in front. He's got a good 20 metres. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. Ross Anderson there in second place. He's got a good 20, 25 metres over the rest. Anderson in second to Morley in third, 1.41 seconds. This is Liam Morley's first race back since he broke his wrist in the club championship here at Three Sisters back in April. So uh, good performance so far by Morley, but he gets deposed there, a spot by Joe Bullen, who just sweeps up the inside of the left-hander there. And Theodore here, championship leader, is stuck well back down the field at the moment. This is not his normal sort of start that you see from James Theodore. He will normally make up half the field in the first lap. Not today, as we see Gress going outside of Jordan Holmes, but that's allowed Bullen down the inside, and Bullen does the pair. Gress and Holmes alike, and uh, Morley goes through with uh, Bullen as well. So good performance here by Liam Morley into the hairpin. Will he look up the inside? Not quite. He has a think about it, but nothing more than that. Gibson's back end is very tail happy today. He was uh, sliding wide there through the hairpin, as indeed he th did through the uh, right-hander uh, through Luna Bend earlier on. That is uh, Matt Gibson on the seven cart. Up the inside of Jordan Holmes goes the championship leader. Anderson on board with him. He goes with him. Eight, the eight cart in front of Theodore is Matt Isherwood. Joe Bullen, cart two, second in the championship. has got five carts between himself and James Theodore, and that's the way he'd like it to stay until the end of the race. I don't think he'll get that wish, but uh, he certainly needs to put a lot of carts between himself and Theodore. There's only one championship point for every position on the track. 
So uh, five carts between, uh, well, it was five carts, make that three carts as Morley sweeps up the inside of Bullen. Gresh tries to go with him, but uh, Bullen retains the inside line through the right-hander. That is Liam Morley, age 13 from Carnforth in Lancashire. This is his first race back since breaking his wrist in the club meeting on the 23rd of April, as I said earlier, and Isherwood deposes Roy Anderson. And Gibson uh, just tags the back of Bullen as we rejoin it. Theodore is right onto the back of Bullen now. Back on board with Anderson, who's now following Josephine Ferrari. He'll push her through down the straight. On the outside is Gibson as they come down into turn one. Oh, Alan, Joe is slowing. Joe is slow out of the first corner and he's slowed right up. Hand in the air, white flag out. He's out of the race. Joe Bullen is out of the race. Out of the race and out of the championship as well. Joe Bullen retires into Park Ferme and no doubt Sam will add to his misery by sticking a microphone in his face as soon as he jumps out of the cart. Back on board with Anderson and Anderson is losing places all over the place. He's making places and then losing them. He's just another, lost another one to Ferrada and then to Gibson in the one turn. So it's a very mixed bag for Roy Anderson so far. You can see Shanae Gress there tucking in the seat, hands on top of the wheel. It's called the puppy dog in the trade. 41.833 for Ryan Singleton is a new lap record. Sam? And I've just bumped into John Stewart, who's actually supporting Sinead Gress. Sinead is absolutely flying today. Has this got anything to do with you? We were both testing here yesterday, and she was flying then. But uh, I had to give her a few uh, tips for the, for the race today, and now she's going even better. <laughs> Yeah, John, I take all the credit, Stuart there, talking about Sinead Gress, who chops off James Theodore's nose as they come down into the left-hander in the first part of Luna. Look at Liam Morley. Great performance by Liam, by Liam Morley after uh, breaking his wrist a few months ago. Isherwood has made his way past Anderson now. He's having a real mixed bag. Is Roy Anderson third in the championship currently as we get a quick look at the details for Matt Isherwood. Ben, you wanted to say something? A little bit of a, a, an update on Sinead Gress, as it's sort of Sinead Gress day today. She's lying in third position and she's really struggling out of the hairpin at the bottom end of the circuit. Uh, she can't get her foot down, she can't get acceleration out of there. And, um, and James Theodore attacking her and then she having to go defensive for the rest of the lap. So uh, in fact she's just lost a position to James Theodore now and so she's down to fourth position. Well, Sam's caught up with Joe Bullen. Joe, you've just come into the pits, what's happened? Um, throughout the race we were losing speed and then as, as we come out of the first corner, I think the clutch is just broken or blown up or something. So we just had to come in. It was just slipping and wouldn't go at all, move anywhere. Yeah, miserable day for Joe Bullen, not for that young man though. 23, Ryan Singleton, his second appearance in the Championship. First appearance was last month. Of course, he gets the advantage of going off the front of the grid compared to the drivers that have been doing the full Championship. Championship leaders have to start last in this series, of course. And there is Singleton going across the line. That's a miserable performance in the celebration stakes. I can only score that a, well, a zero for originality and uh, a one for enthusiasm. Ryan Singleton, the mighty midget, is going to have to work on those celebration skills as Theodore comes across in third place. Ross Anderson, it is, has taken second. Well, clear in second place he was too. Let's check the official results. And coming out the final turn there, Sinead Gress has just deposed Matt Gibson for a place. She's finished in sixth place. So Singleton takes the win and the fastest lap with a new lap record. It was James Theodore's lap record, not anymore, 41.849. Ross Anderson in second, Theodore third, followed in by Roy Anderson, Farada, Gress, Gibson, Isherwood, Liam Morley. Good performance, finished ninth in, ninth in the end, but a good comeback drive for him. And Jordan Holmes, 10th. I'm here with the top three in Minimax, James Theodore in third. Nice to see you again, a regular visitor to the podium. And Ross Anderson, we haven't seen you up here before, so congratulations. Ryan Singleton, you had it's your second appearance on the podium, obviously second last month. And this month you've taken the win, the fastest lap, and lap record? Uh, yeah, I didn't get the best of laps after the race. Um, but as I was trying to get past the leader, he was defending me, so I struggled a bit trying to get past him. But then when I got past him, I just got my head down, pushed, and managed to get the lap record, which I didn't really realise that I was pushing that hard, and then just took the victory. Quick check of the championship positions reveals that James Theodore now has a 21 point championship lead, and he could tie up this championship before the last round. Anderson's up to second, Gress to third. Junior Rotax for the 13 to 16s next, and with the championship lead changing hands in each of the last two rounds, can Scotland's Joe McKean hang on to it? After the break, we'll be asking him exactly that. See you then.
Grid positions for Junior Rotax, the 13 to 16s. Curtis Roberts on pole, Kurt Holmes on P2. Tom Fawcett for HRS starts off on P3. Liam Fennick always a contender here on P4. Then comes Richard Ward on five. Last month's winner was Matthew Hartley, starts P6 this time. Then comes Craig Carroll, Alex France on eight, Johnny Buchanan nine, Kim Longley for focal point on ten. Then Jason Taylor for Solway Slayton Tile on 11. Matthew Hall for KJ Ford of North Wales on 12. Jake Green is on 13. John Byrne 14. Michael Janney comes next, followed by Ben Arnold. And then Ryan Todd. Danny Murphy goes off 18. Andrew Lawrence for Venhill Magura off 19. Ross Wiley goes off 20. And John Stewart third in the championship. Tom Wrigley second in the championship. And the championship leader is Joe McKean. Junior Rotax for 13 to 16, sponsored by Zip North and Head to Head Motorsport. We're off and running. Wrigley's made a good move down the outside. Oh, there's contact in front of him though. He's had to go round it. That's Arnold and car 24, Craig Carroll involved. And unfortunately for Tom Wrigley, so we see the uh, picture of the championship leader who we've just seen interviewed. Unfortunately for Wrigley, he's had to go round the outside of the two carts colliding and that has slowed him down considerably. Fennick leads from Hartley, then Fawcett. Cart 30 is Kurt Holmes. He's in fourth place. Championship leader with plenty of work to do. Still stuck back there down the back of the field. That's uh, Joe McKean's. John Stewart just in front. It's Hartley out front. Last month's winner has come through from P6 to grab second. That's Matthew Hartley. And then Fawcett, Tom Fawcett there in third place for the HRS team. Fawcett looking up the inside at the hairpin and makes the move. Sam? Alan, I'm here with Roy Anderson, who's actually racing in Minimax today, but you're actually standing watching Junior Max. Who is it that you're supporting? Tom Fawcett. Why is that? Because uh, I used to race with him in Minimax, but he's gone up into Junior, and he's uh, just one of the real no good pals, and I hope he does well in this championship. He's doing Super 1 at the moment, but it's that series finished now, so he's doing this series. Are you hoping to move up to Junior Max next year? If we can reach the weight, but I don't think that's we're not going to reach the weight, so I think we'll stay in Minimax for next year back with a race, Kim Longley stuck on the outside, Stewart and McKean down the inside, Lawrence going with them and Wrigley trying to go with them as well, Tom Wrigley's got uh, right back into the action here, he was off through turn one, straight over the bank, so uh, he will have lost 30, a good 30 to 40 metres, but uh, he's got that all back and then some, Stewart up the inside of Byrne, McKean goes with him, Back with the leaders through Luna. Still Fennick out front. Hartley now is back into second. Fawcett deposed back to third. Still Holmes there in uh, fourth place. Cart 29 there. Tom Fawcett on the CRG chassis. Racing for the HRS team. Who unfortunately and tragically lost two of their team members recently. Brian Hornby the mechanic. Um, well known within the team Brian. And uh, Alan Wones the father of Nicholas who races and is well known for racing within the junior road tax category this category we're we're watching now i'm pleased to say that nicholas is here this weekend and will be racing in the club championship race tomorrow so uh, everybody's best wishes will be with him for that race and our thoughts and best wishes are with the families at this very difficult time for them the cart stream through luna one more time jason taylor there on the 16 cart being followed by kim longley talking of whom Alan, I'm sitting here with Paul Longley, Kim's little brother. Do you enjoy coming to watch her? Yeah, I come to support her because um, she's my sister and she does a lot for me. So if my brother's beating me, he bullies me a lot. So she just does a lot for me. So I do something for her and it's supporting her. <laughs> yeah, Titch, uh, Titch Longley there talking about uh, his uh, older brother, Ryan, who we've just seen in the uh, Minimax race. Nice to know you've got an older sister you can turn to when your older brother's beating you up. <laughs> that's uh, Joe McKean on cart one, championship leader. That's Frenick clear now of Hartley and Fawcett. Then comes Holmes, then Murphy. 23 is Alex France. Up the inside of 23 is uh, Curtis Roberts. Oh, and Roberts has taken France off and right in front of the clerk of the course. I can't think of the worst place to do that. That's uh, 23. Alex France and 33, Curtis Roberts caught out in that incident there, so they have dropped right the way back down the field. 
and uh, Robert's the one doing the overtaking and he will be deemed the one responsible as we get a look at the cart one cart of Joe McKean watch his exhaust there is a bolt loose in that exhaust you can see it is bumping up and down and he had better hope as the championship leader that he does not get a mechanical flag for that if it gets any worse he will do at the moment it looks like the, the bolt that holds the exhaust in place you can see it rattling up and down there at the back of the car behind the seat uh, the bolts obviously come out and uh, the exhaust is flapping around as he goes up the inside of Johnny Buchanan for a place Stewart goes with him as well that's six Danny Murphy Murphy's having a good run here putting, him right, uh, putting himself right back into contention for the championship and uh, what a good move he made moving from Mini Max to Junior Rotax I think I did say that once didn't I Ben you've got some news Yes, Alan, I do have news. Forget number 13. Number two is the new unlucky number. Today, Joe Byrne, of course, retired in the Minimax race. And now Tom the Wriggler, Wrigley, has retired in this Junior Rotax race and is standing on the inside now of Luna, uh, looking rather dejected. Miserable, miserable luck for the Wriggler, Tom Wrigley. And uh, it's to the advantage of that man, Joe McKean's because his closest contender in the championship will not, well, looks like he won't be finishing this race. So um, he will score some points, uh, Tom Wrigley, but nowhere near as many as he would like to, as Joe McKean puts in the fastest lap of the race. So McKean, the championship leader, on the bubble now, and he's moving in behind the two carts in front here. Cart four of Ross Wiley and uh, cart 30, Kurt Holmes. That is the Wriggler, Tom Wrigley on the Haas chassis he was a guest of the uh, Haas factory recently out at uh, Brescia in Italy coming into round four last month uh, Haas chassis led both the Minimax and Junior Rotax categories James Theodore of course on the Haas chassis in Minimax and now leading that championship comfortably by 21 points but uh, the Wriggler who led the Junior Rotax category coming into last month's round as we see Fawcett up the inside for the lead spot deposing uh, Fennec back one uh, Wrigley led the Junior Rotax category as Fennec fights back and Hartley goes with him forced it back to third uh, the Wrigler led this category if I can just get out what I was trying to say uh, coming into last month but a bit of a disaster last month for going out through turn one got involved in a big impact there and it looks like he's got terminal problems this month as well. Hartley looks up the inside of Fennec. Uh, Kim Longley has been involved in some contact on the outside of Turn 1. There she is, she's getting the cart going again. But she's about to come under pressure from the leaders. As Hartley looks up the inside of Fennec, they go side by side out of uh, Dunlop. But uh, Fennec holds on through Paddock. This is the business end of the race, penultimate lap. So you don't want to be giving up trap position now. You need to be leading going into the last lap. We've got a back marker in front. That's Kim Longley as they come through Luna for the penultimate time. They go across the line now. They get the last lap board. Fennec defends vigorously as we get a quick look at Ward Byrne and Taylor coming through Luna. Ben? Oh dear, the uh, blue flag's not quite out in time for the arrival of the front three on the back of Kim Longley's bumper. And unfortunately, Kim Longley getting in the way of uh, number 29. That's Tom Fawcett chopping off his nose and in fact as I speak Tom Fawcett and number 25 Matthew Hartley going off in a huge cloud of dust right in front of me and uh, that's thrown it wide open now it certainly has and it means that Danny Murphy's through to second Ross Wiley to third but the winner is Fennec he's comfortably clear in the end but uh, the three seconds or so he won by belies the true story Here's that uh, replay, the Pi Research replay. Hartley up the inside. He's the one doing the overtaking. Runs into Fawcett on the outside. And the person doing the overtaking in those circumstances, particularly as the man in the white shirt, right there, who is the clerk of the course, the driver doing the overtaking in those circumstances will always be found responsible. And indeed, Matt Hartley has been placed behind Tom Fawcett in the final result. Fennec takes the win from Murphy and Wiley. McKean will be happy with his results. That will consolidate his championship lead. 40.493, the fastest lap of the race. Stewart there in fifth. Kurt Holmes, a good drive for six. Then comes Buchanan, the aforementioned Fawcett and Hartley and Jake Green. The top three in Junior Rotax, Ross Wiley in third, Daniel Murphy in second, and our winner, Liam Fennec. 
Liam, you had a comfortable lead at the start, then Matthew Hartley and Tom Fawcett started breathing down your neck. Were you worried? Yeah, I were worried. I thought they were going to have me at one point, but they managed to strip each other for the last lap. And in fact, you finished uh, three seconds ahead of Daniel Murphy in the end because the other two took themselves off. I guess you didn't see much of that. No, just got my head down and focused where I was going. Championship points for Junior Rotax. Joe McKean did have a three-point lead coming into the round, but as a result of Tom Wrigley going out and other forces, he now leads by 10 over Ross Wiley, who has one point over John Stewart. Eight points then back to Wrigley, who's 19 off the lead. Danny Murphy, 25 points off the lead, can still win this championship. And don't forget, he missed the first round doing mini-max. John Byrne into the top six. If you're interested in starting karting, after the break, Alan will be speaking to Nick Abbott from Head to Head Motorsport to tell you how you can get that all-important race license. See you after the break. The only senior class we cover in this series, TKM Extreme. Ian Cameron on pole. On P2 is Chris Prescott, then comes the first of the Devries, Adrian, followed by his brother Noel. James Taylor is on P5. Chris Burton had the fastest lap two rounds ago. The Cash Machine, Chris Cash on seven, followed by Andrew Gorman on eight. Phil Smith starts off nine. He's had two wins, two DNFs. Then comes Jamie Creese, Anthony Lester and Dean Golber. Mr. Bling is Wayne McCauley, then comes uh, Martin Lyle off 14, Paul Monk starts on 15, third in the championship is Luke Cordell, second in the championship is James Duxbury and the championship leader is Matt Bell. TKM Extreme sponsored by Talco.com, rough and running, green light, we've already got contact, we haven't even reached turn one, four carts involved, that's the cash machine, Chris Cash, Ben what did you see? This is absolutely crazy. Martin Lyle starting over half a lap behind the rest of the pack. And then uh, Paul Monks and Wayne McCauley getting into Chris Cash on the start finish line. So all the league contenders are all, all over the place now. Well, it looks like Martin Lyle's holding something together there. Here's the replay. Look at Car Tate, the light grey suit. That's <laughs> Anthony Lester. He's done a complete 360 and carried on. Monks took a ride on the back of McCauley's car. That is McCauley right there in the shot. So uh, he has a more serious problem. That's Herbert out front and Smith just in behind. Don't forget what I said to Nick Abbott earlier. Smith either wins or DNFs. Ben? Yeah, Alan, I've uh, caught up with Chris Cash, who, who landed at my feet, basically, after his first lap accident. Uh, what happened? Um, I think um, I just got clipped from behind and just spun 360 all the way down the straight. Got hit by some of the front runners. Uh, you know, I think I... Spoiled it there, run up into the first corner. And yeah, there's a big black line coming all the way down the main straight. Why, why is the car not going anymore? I'm not sure. It's on the clutch, so it should have gone straight away, but it wasn't, so I just thought it, I was better leaving it. it. It wasn't moving. Yeah, the cash machine, Chris Cash, uh, makes a long trip from Middlesex uh, every month to feature in this Motors TV Ultimate Karting Challenge, and that's a long way to come to go out before Turn 1. Uh, Chris's brother Steve also races here, as does his sister Rachel. Next lap round, Bell up the inside of Crease, Ben! Duxbury has grounds to a halt, his engine has given up, or it certainly sounded like it. Um, and just have a look, if you can, at Martin Lyle at some point. He's actually driving the whole of this lap with one hand on the carburettor. Is he operating the throttle with his hand? I'm not sure what his exact problem is, but it's a very, very impressive performance as we get a look at Herbert being hounded there by Chris Burton. Burton, the uh, TKM Dragon Masters winner, at uh, Gladdy Course Park in 2003, confirmed there by the graphic, comes from Bill Thwells on the Venom chassis. Noel Devery is out with a mechanical flag, I think it's for a rear bumper, let's uh, hear what he has to say. Uh, we were going into the start pretty slow, we were getting pushed from behind and I guess I got whacked at that stage at least once, and then got into a bit of a tangle on the first corner, got whacked again and uh, I guess it must have fallen off some time around there and one or two drivers passed me and there was a, a point to my, my inside uh, left and I guess that's what they were trying to tell me but I wasn't aware that the bumper had fallen off. Last lap board is out, that's Duxbury still running but he's well down the field and Ben's got some news on the weather. Alan, the last lap board comes out pretty much just in time because these raindrops are getting much, much more as I'm watching into the inside. Phil Smith 
and Paul, uh, Luke Connell getting together. They've actually retained their positions, but a huge moment. Yeah, Smith left the door open and in fact has dropped back to second place as a result of the contact. Now, what will the view of the clerk of the course be? Who was standing right there, as indeed he was earlier when uh, Hartley made a very similar move on Fawcett. Well, Cornell is extremely happy. Let's have a look at the replay. Well, I'm not sure what's going on there. Smith looks like he's almost turning in to protect the line, but it was too late. Cordell was committed. Contact between them. Cordell's made the best of it and has held on to the result. The clerk of the course sees nothing in that incident. Uh, worth changing the positions over. So Luke Cordell with the fastest lap, 42.690, makes his first podium of the season count. Phil Smith and Luke Herbert then follow him in as the top three. Matt Bell will retain the championship lead, but only by one point. And he was followed in by Lester Burton, Chris Monks, Golber and Cameron. Top three in TKM, Luke Herbert, the first time at the Motor TV Ultimate Kart Challenge. And third for you, Phil Smith, two-time winner, nearly three-time winner. And Luke Caudill, first time on the podium at all for you and a first. Now, talk us through that last lap. Well, yeah. Excellent race up until the last lap. Um, been shutting Phil Smith down the whole race. Come to the last lap, he defended into the last hairpin. We went out uh, nice and wide to get the run on him into the last, or second last corner as it is. Um, went up the inside of him, N not quite sure if Phil Smith knew I was coming. Turned into me, we kind of locked wheels, got caught up, out onto the rubble. Unlocked wheels, he was on the dirt, I was on the dirt. Then we got around the corner and just got away. Um, Phil, your view on the accident, you took quite a ride. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, do quite a bit. But uh, like Luke said, it was I defended into the herping. He got the run out of the herping into the, the right hander at the pit bend, and uh, I just didn't know he was it. I just turned in on my normal racing line, and he obviously thought he had the corner. But you know, it's just just a racing incident. And I went over the rubble, and he carried on the on the track. Fortunately for him. If you're going to defend, defend. Matt Bell has a one-point lead over Luke Cordell. Paul Monk's uh, nine back of the leader. Then comes Duxbury, Lyle and Leicester rounding out the six. Well, a controversial end to the last race there, the TKM Extreme Class, with Luke Cordell and Phil Smith having a slight incident on their last lap. Luke Cordell keeping the win and receiving love from the clerk of the course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Luke Hughes won the cadet race, very convincingly, that was great to see. Uh, Ryan Singleton unfortunately didn't really have any competition in the Minimax class with everyone else at the back of the field. Uh, Junior Rotax got a full in Hartley, really had a chance there to get second and third position but knocked each other off and so Murphy and Wiley took that instead. And then in TKM class, as you say, Luke Cordell uh, won that. But for me, the fact that people had number two on their cart was a real downer for them because uh, you'd expect it from something like a number 13, Joe Bullen's clutch failed. James Duxbury's plug lead fell off, and though he repaired that on the side of the track and carried on, he was about four laps down. And then uh, the Wriggler had a problem down here at Luna and was standing out on the side of the track after about five or six laps. Only Daniel Sweeney managed to finish the race in one piece, um, which is good to see. Another person who had a, an awful luck today was uh, Martin Lyle, who uh, drove around for the whole race holding his ignition system down by his side. And his ignition system is a very complex piece of kit. So he's holding that together and driving with one hand and lapping as quick as James Duxbury. Phil Smith and Luke Cordell. Pretty impressive. Yep, very impressive. However, my, f my driver of the day is Matt Bell again. That's a surprise, surprise. Yes, well, his dad, you don't know this, but his dad put an extra four kilos on his car and he did start last. He came through to fourth, so I think he would have taken the win having him not have that extra weight there. Um, as always, the official decision is from Alan. Matt Bell, uh, no. Luke Hughes put in an impressive performance in cadets with his drive from 16th to 1st and there was much to admire about Liam Morley's return to racing after breaking his wrist back in April. But the drive of the day award was always intended as a reward for effort in the face of adversity. And Martin Lyle's one-handed drive was exactly that. The Autosign Graphics drive of the day is Martin Lyle. And that's it for round five. Four more rounds left and next month it's going to be the best month of them all because we get to see Sam racing in TKM and starting from pole position. Can't wait for that. Yes, apparently so. That's what I have been told. However, Ben will be reporting from some lawnmower racing at Wisber Green. Yes, that's what I thought. See you then.